This week on Our Football with Chris Ash, big plays abound as we recap the Scarlet Knights battle with the Hoosiers. We talk with the team and find out how their own experiences have helped shape their Rutgers story. We'll sit down with sophomore cornerback Isaiah Wharton, who has started 21 consecutive games. And we'll look ahead with Coach Ash as he prepares his squad for a road game with Michigan State. It's all just ahead on Our Football with Chris Ash. Our next coach has to be a great ambassador for our university, someone who can lead young men, someone who will get our fans hopeful and excited again about Rutgers football. Chris Ash is the right man to lead that effort. I want to build a first-class program here. Hold it up. Hold it up. It's going to take an extreme amount of work. It's going to take a lot of the right people. Great timing, Going in the same direction. I want to build a fast, physical team that plays with relentless effort. What a run by Robert Martin for the score. Tremendous enthusiasm. Taken down. What incredible effort. And plays for each other. A program that the university, the state of New Jersey, high school coaches and high school players, they want to come here and be a part of it. Rutgers was a fit because I just think it matches my personality in terms of who I am. I think Rutgers um, displays the underdog mentality. It's Jersey. I love Jersey. Um, you know, people don't really understand Jersey, and I just think that's how Rutgers is. You know, I think Rutgers is uh, a place that has a lot to prove all the time, and that's how, that's the Jersey attitude. You always feel like you have something to prove, even when you've done great things. Stop to the backfield, JPO Julian Pinnock's Otterick with the stop. Me, I think I grew very well as a person. Uh, you know, academically, they teach you a lot academically. So, I mean, I became more intelligent as a person. And on and off the field and off the, and on the field with football, I been, believe my football IQ has went through the charts of me just learning, you know, playbooks and just in the weight room alone, I gained a lot of weight and got a lot stronger to go against a lot of big guys so each and every odd day. So I feel as though Rutgers has prepared me for a lot on and off the field. I was a former walk-on, came to Rutgers, uh, really just excited for the opportunity. Um, I was able to get an impact uh, early as my redshirt freshman year on the field and continue to hopefully become, you know, one of the, you know, big, uh, bigger leaders on the field and also, um, you know, play a lot of football here. So. Dumps it over the middle. It is caught in a touchdown for the tight end, Matt Flanagan. I want, I want to be remembered. Not only for what I did for the program, but how hard I worked, how dedicated I was to it, and just my drive and the, the way I carried myself every day. You know, I grew up about, literally about 15 minutes from here in Metuchen. And, um, you know, the guys I grew up watching, you know, the, the, the Eric Fosters, the, the, the Brian Leonard's, you know, they really, uh, inspired me when I was younger, uh, growing up in the shadows of the stadium and, and, you know, just locally hearing about what the 06 team did and that really put a put a spark in my head and when the opportunity came when I started getting recruited, it came down to a couple schools but, you know, in my heart and, and the way things uh, shaped up, it just felt like Rutgers was the best fit. I mean, I've, I've loved my experience here ever since the beginning and, uh, you know, I just, it's, it's helped me you know, grow in many ways, many aspects of my life, not just football. Uh, it helps me develop a great work ethic and uh, how to, you know, manage my time and stuff like that. I know I'm going to um, carry that throughout the rest of my life as well. Time for the tosses there for the touchdown catch by Nick Archie Diacono.
Hello again, everyone. I'm Bruce Speck. Welcome to Our Football with Chris Ash. Coach, after the last ball game, you took a lot of the blame saying, we've got to coach better, help our players execute better. Why do you feel that way? Uh, because I'm the head coach, and uh, you know, what happens in this program is my responsibility. Uh, on Saturdays, if we don't execute the way that we need to, uh, I'm the one that's got to you know, find ways to, to get that done and, and help our football, our coaches and our football players be able to uh, do their job the way they need uh, to do it on Saturdays. And I've got to look at everything that we do throughout the week of preparation, practices, and continue to find ways to get us to competitive excellence on Saturdays. But you're still getting the effort and the energy that you're demanding. Yeah, we, we talk about uh, that all the time. What is football? Football is energy. You can't win games without some energy. Football is toughness. You got to be tough to go out and play football. You got to have focus to go play football. Uh, but you also have to have execution and you got to have consistency. I think we have the first uh, few. I think we have the energy. I think we have the toughness. I think we have the focus. We've got to do a better job of, with the execution. We got to do a better job of executing consistently. What is the challenge of finishing a football game after you've done a lot of positive things during the game? Yeah, it, it, it's belief that you can get the job done. And, you know, uh, at times I feel like right now uh, as a football program, uh, no matter how well we've played, we're waiting for that one play that implodes us. And we, we got to get out of that mindset and, and we've got to make the plays that we need to to get us over the top to finish things the way we, we want to. You forced four turnovers, you had seven pass breakups, two interceptions, 13 tackles for loss. How do you evaluate the defense's performance? Because when you look at the numbers, they look gaudy. Yeah, the numbers don't tell the true story. I'm, I'm very disappointed in what the numbers look like. But when I really watched the film and evaluate it the way you know defensive coaches do, uh, I think it was one of our best efforts defensively throughout the year. Richard Lego in at quarterback, firing to the middle, it's intercepted! Deontay Roberts with the pick for Rutgers, and the Scarlet Knights get a red zone turnover. We, we stopped the run, we got takeaways, we had TFLs, uh, we had some stops. Uh, what we didn't do is win our one-on-one -on -one battles in the pass game, and that's that's where the numbers really got uh, out of whack is in, in the throw game, and it's because of the one-on-one -on -one battles. We've got to do a better job of finishing uh, some of those one-on-ones and winning some of those one-on-one -on -one battles. Indiana, the first play of this drive. Lego to the middle, it's intercepted again. Second time, Richard Lego's been picked off. Saquon Hampton has some room down the sideline into Hoosier territory as Hampton gets his first interception of the year while Lego has been picked off twice. We go 50% in some of those. The, the uh, total yardage and the outcome is completely different. But uh, when you look at the 11 players out there, we've got nine of those 11. Uh, eight, if, if Anthony DeChoppy's in there, nine when Kai Hester's in there, uh, those guys are coming back next year. So I'm really excited about uh, our continued improvement and where we're at right now. We gotta get better, but with those that, that number of guys coming back, uh, I'm excited about the future of our defense. You had two blocked field goals and four turnovers in this game that you forced. So there's a positive to build upon. For Griffin Oaks, as long this year, 49, it's blocked. As it rolls away, the Rutgers special teams coming up with a blocked field goal. Defensively, we blocked an extra point. We blocked the field goal. Uh, the effort was tremendous uh, on that unit. So really excited about what we did in, in those phases to be able to get some takeaways to help hopefully change the uh, outcome of the game. Jawan Harris, eight grabs for 118 yards. What about his performance overall? He continues to get better and better. He's a young player that I'm excited about for the future. He continues to show up every day to work. And he beco he's becoming more consistent every Saturday, and he's making more and more plays because of it. I look at Giovanni Rochino, and in evaluating his game, I got to go back to the one play where he got belted and made a terrific pass for a touchdown to Andre Patton. What does that tell you about his inner workings, his toughness? Three receivers out to the wide side for Rochino. Look that way as he rolls out. Pressure comes as Rochino gets hit. Throwing deep, a man all alone. Wide open, Andre Patton has nothing but pay dirt ahead. Rutgers comes right back to score on the first play of the drive. Well, he's always been a tough guy. That, that's never been a, a question with Gio. Um, his resolve, his resiliency to be able to, you know, take shots like that, uh, take bad plays and, and move on from them. You know, that's what he's always had and that's what we really like about him. And that's another example of it. Third and goal, Rashidio will keep it and score!
do you want to just say to these guys, hey, we got that win today. Do they need that as far as going forward? Well, it, it, I don't talk about the win. Um, what we need to do is go play a complete football team, a complete football game. We need to play clean, consistently on offense, defense, and special teams. And if we do that, we're going to win these uh, close games. We haven't been able to do that. I don't want them to focus on the win. I don't want them to focus on the outcome. I want them to focus on the little details that help us uh, be able to check off our plan to win. If we do that, then we're going to have a chance uh, to get the W's that we all want. This weekend, Rutgers travels to Michigan State. The coach will rejoin us later in the show to preview the game at Spartan Stadium. More our football with Chris Ash just ahead. Four man rush. Collins airing it out. And that ball is it's caught and taken away. Wharton comes down with the interception. Isaiah Wharton from Kissimmee, Florida has started every game for Rutgers that he's had a chance to play after being redshirted his first year. What did that first season mean to you? Because it's never easy for a kid to say, I'm not going to play right away. Yeah, um, I knew I had to develop um, just physically and, and mentally. So sitting out that year, and um, I remember being back on like the scout team, just going against Leonte every day, just developing my game, working on my craft every day. I look back at it, and I'm real thankful to have assured it. How much did playing against a guy who's as talented and a pro now as Leonte Carew make you better? Yeah, it just forced me to be on my A game every day. Um, I got better. I knew that I had to give him a good look as well. So every day I went out to the price, I was just giving him all, just going hard. What's your relationship like with Blasso and Austin? You guys are the cornerbacks. Everyone's always looking at the two of you. You're like frickin' frack. Yeah, yeah um, I mean, like, that's one of, he's one of my best friends. Um, we, we spend a lot of time together outside the Hale Center, outside of football. We're always doing things together. So I feel like we're just real good friends. We're, our personalities are real similar. We both love the game. So we've bonded real close since we met. Can you and Bless make each other better? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we push each other each and every day. Like, there's some days after practice, I might feel uh, I feel like get, getting extra work in, or he might feel in, feel like getting extra work in. We just push each other because we know we have a lot of potential and we got a lot of talent, and we don't want either of us to fall short. So we we push each other each and every day. So you're a Floridian and you're in the Garden State. How'd you end up at Rutgers? Um, when I started getting recruited, most of my most of my offers came from out of state. So. I mean, even though I'm a real family-oriented guy and I did want to stay close to home, I knew I was going to have to leave. And um, I feel like with the Big Ten Conference, you play against um, there's amazing talent. And, I mean, all of our games are televised. It's one of the best um, conferences in college football. So I knew I wanted to take my talent somewhere where I'm competing against the best each and every week. And um, I, I chose Rutgers just because um, I, I, like, I like the facilities. Um, I have some family in New York, so that, I, I, that, was, that was a big, big thing for me. And, um, just, it was mainly playing in the Big Ten, just um, playing against good competition each and every week. Now tell me about how many different positions you actually played in high school. Oh man, I played quarterback, running back, receiver, corner. Uh, I was even the holder on special teams wow. for, for field goals. I mean, I was all over the field. It was real fun in high school. So did that experience in many ways help shape you for Rutgers because you kind of know everything that's going on in the field? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, especially being a quarterback, being a receiver, I know how what receivers want to do to get open. Um, just being an athlete and playing in different positions, it helps mold your game when it's time to focus in on one position. So even though you're a redshirt sophomore, are you becoming a leader for this team as we go forward and watch Rutgers for years to come? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, that's one of my goals to, you know, eventually be a leader of, you know, like the secondary and just be, you know, one of the faces of our defense, you know, someone that somebody can depend on and just look forward to, know that I'm always doing the right thing. So Isaiah, what's your message to Rutgers fans? Um, definitely, um, I feel like we have a great coaching staff. We have a great locker room full of guys. Like I said, the morale is great. We're working hard each and every day, and we know the future is bright for this program. Isaiah, good luck to you as you complete this season and in the future at Rutgers. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. You got it. That's Isaiah Wharton, redshirt sophomore, defensive back for the Scarlet Knights. More our football with Chris Ash just ahead. You know what it is, chest up, shoulders back. If you don't have a bounce, I'm kicking you out the group. Grab that ball. 
Y'all got med ball abs, four set of 20. That's overhead, that's chest, and two sides. Remember that? You don't look like an athlete, you're getting kicked out of the group. Bad athlete, go. Chest up, bend over, retract. Wise, control. Coach Beamer, go. Love you too. Roman, all the way down. Go. Derek, you with me. Yeah, you can hold it. Fight on your own. Fight on your own. Fight on your own. How you hear you push somebody if you do that? How that pop? Think about that. There we go. I want to see. I want to see. Now. This weekend, Rutgers travels to Spartan Stadium in East Lansing to take on Michigan State. Coach, this is a team that's struggling right now. What do you expect? Uh, I expect a great football game. Uh, I expect a great Michigan State football team to show up. They are 2-7, and seven, but when I watch film, I don't see a 2-7 and seven football team. I see a team that's got a lot of seniors and juniors that have won a lot of football games. They've been a lot of big games. Something uh, hasn't gone exactly the way they want it to uh, this year, uh, but they've got too much talent, too much experience. Uh, they can put it together at any time. And, um, you know, they're, they're a good football team uh, with a lot of good players and really good coaches. With O'Connor and Terry, do you prepare for two different quarterbacks in this game? Uh, yeah, they're two different quarterbacks, but they do a lot of the same things. They can both throw the ball. They can both run the quarterback run game. Uh, they can be under center. They can be in a shotgun. So their um, talents are similar. What they do with the offense is, is basically the same, but you do have to know who's back there. When you look at Mark D'Antonio and what he's done with this program over the years, what kind of respect do you have for him and the program? A tremendous amount of respect. I've uh, coached against Michigan State several times, both at Wisconsin and at Ohio State. Some of the wars that we had when I was at Wisconsin were some of the best games I've been involved in as a coach. And I've got tremendous respect for what he's done at Michigan State, their whole staff, and that program in general. How exciting is it for you with the number of young players you have for them to get added experience here down the stretch in these last few games? Uh, it, it means a lot. You know, right now, postseason plays is not going to happen. Uh, so it's very important for us to get some young players, some experience, uh, whether it be more practice reps or, or some reps in games for us to be able to develop them for the future. Will you see which guys will become leaders, which ones will emerge in these final few games? Uh, in these final few weeks, in general, we will, because uh, when you don't have postseason play, everybody has a choice to make. You know, how are you going to show up? What type of effort are you going to continue to give? And you'll find out who your uh, real leaders are and who your real guys are in moments like this. And based on what I've seen at practice from this week, uh, I'm excited about our youth. And I'm really appreciative of our older guys because they continue to grind. The challenge of playing in this league every game, whether it's home or on the road, is a game you've got to play top quality football. Do you, do you embrace that stuff? Oh, absolutely. That's why I came here. You know, I'm, uh, I've been in this league for a long time. Uh, I know um, how competitive the league is. I know what type of talent each team has. I know what type of coaching each team has. And you got to bring your best every day. You know, there's not a uh, team you can say, let's roll out our helmet and we're going to win. It's, it's not going to work that way. We got to show up every single day. We got to bring our A game every day. That's in practice, that's in meetings, and that's in, in games. And uh, we have yet to do that uh, consistently. Chris, do you have any advice for these young people that want to become leaders? Uh, yeah, we, we talk about leadership all the time. Uh, we have some tremendous leadership on this football team from our upperclassmen. We're going to lose some of that. And we talk uh, to our younger guys to look and, and uh, listen and, and follow uh, the type of leadership that's being demonstrated by those guys. I think a lot of younger guys are starting to do that. Three to go. Good luck this week, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's it for this edition of Our Football with Chris Ash. We'll see you next week. Rutgers fans, don't miss your chance to join in and help build a Big Ten game day experience. Go to ScarletKnights.com for tickets to these upcoming home games.